Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Sia Swag! Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya. This is Sia Swag. I have a brand new backpack to show you guys today. This is an adorable pattern. I saw it last weekend when I was teaching at a retreat and Nancy from Fabric Therapy had one of these made up and I sat there and oohed and awed over it. It was just amazing and adorable and I knew it had to be my next one. <laughs> All right, here it is. This is the Fold and Zip by Sophisticated Designs. And I am wearing the Petite. It comes in three sizes, which is fabulous. And this petite size is even, I mean, this is probably the size I would make myself if I was going to use it as a little purse um, for a little day trip or something. It is a fabulous size. I absolutely love the shape of it. Like, I'd seen pictures of it, but when you see it in person, it is a totally different ball game. You're just like, oh my goodness, this is such a cool bag. Look at that. All right, let's go over details. I have a lot of different um, little shops that went into making this bag and I will link them all down below in the descriptions. They have fabulous products. So this is a canvas. I think it's water resistant canvas that I got from Nancy at Fabric Therapy. I love it so much. It's sewed up so beautifully. I didn't have to interface it at all. It was great. Um, I got my, this is my faux suede that I absolutely love from Indo Love Creation is the other part of the main body. Um, she just had a restock and she's almost sold out again. You guys keep buying her out, which is fabulous. Um, I got this embroidery pattern, which was the video before this one um, from a little shop on Etsy and I'll link, link that down below as well. My webbing here the striped webbing and my inside canvas is from Wonderground Fabrics. We're just gonna open this baby up and you're gonna see how amazing this is. Look at this. <laughs> so this pretty turquoisey blue color, that's from Wonderground as well. Okay, as you can see, this flap opens all the way up and you can fold it and go. Hence the name. Um, it opens all the way up. You have a mesh pocket here on this flap. You have a padded um, tablet electronic slip pocket. Like it goes all the way down so it can slip all the way in there. Um, you don't have to make it pattern and you don't have to make it go all the way through. You could close that up and just have a slip pocket if you want. It's got these side mesh pockets. And then on the back, I have a zipper pocket here. Maybe I can, okay. And on the front, it has another zip pocket here and water bottle holders on the side. I mean, she thought of everything when she designed this backpack. I absolutely love it. The way I interfaced it, I pretty much used foam. Um, I did not keep it out of my seams. It gets pretty thick if you don't do that. Like, it gets pretty thick. I would not suggest that with a domestic at all. She has all the pattern pieces organized in a way that you can keep all of your interfacing out of your seam allowances, and it's fabulous. Her instructions are so good. Um, she has had testers sew this on a domestic machine using cotton, and interfacing all out of your seam allowances, so it's very doable. Um, I, ooh, and then look at my tag. This is a brand new design coming out from Heartwood and Hyde, and it's called Live in Color. Comes out on June 8th. Guys, I mean, this, this doesn't do it justice. They are gorgeous in person. And she's gonna give me a little code to give you to get a little discount on retail, so Stand by for that. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, last about all of the stuff. The zippers, the pulls, all the rainbow hardware is my website. And this one and a half inch webbing. That is the one thing I changed on this bag. 
is I did just my own backpack straps. I didn't do the padded one that she has in the pattern. Um, those are great too. If you wanted to go ahead and tackle those, go for it. It is a bag you used with um, binding. You use bias tape to bind it. Um, I think the most tricky part of this bag is just the curved zippers. You've got this curve up here and you've got this curve down on the bottom. I would do maybe a smaller project like her on the go pouch and get that curve kind of down before you attempt these curves. Um, I would say for that reason, it's maybe an intermediate pattern. Other than that, everything's pretty, pretty spot on and we've done before. I think that's it. I think that's all my information. All right, guys, there will be a discount code, SIASWAG10, all in caps, for 10% off of her patterns and use the link that I put under there and go ahead and get yourself this cute, adorable fold and zip backpack, three sizes, three sizes in one pattern. All right, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's start making this. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this backpack. Again, this is my first time making one of these, so hopefully I have all the pieces correct. Um, I am using Decaville Heavy and some foam for my support on all my stabilizers. Other than that, I'm using all uh, canvas type materials and faux leather. So it should have a nice good shape to it. Um, again, I have an industrial machine, so I know my machine can handle these layers. If you are doing a domestic, I would highly recommend sticking to lighter materials and keeping all of your stabilizer out of your seam allowances. It will help a ton. Okay, so here we go. I have all of my pattern pieces clipped um, to my material. Just there's quite a few and I wanna be sure I don't get anything mixed up. So I have them all organized that way. So here's my front pocket outside piece. This is my exterior. And then I have two lining pieces. Now they are cut a little bit different. Your um, exterior is cut with this little notched zipper in there. And then your two lining pieces do not have that. So be sure you pay attention to that directions, those directions on the pattern pieces. All right. So my exterior back panel, I have one um, my faux suede and one my lining. And then I do have my Decaville Heavy adhered. It tells you where to do it on the pattern piece. You can use uh, Peltex as well as Decaville Heavy. That's just my preferred choice. All right, so I have that cut out. And then it also does recommend some foam or fleece on that back panel. Since I am using a heavier um, faux suede, I am not doing that. I am doing foam on all my inside pieces, so it still should have a good shape to it. Hopefully that works out okay. <laughs> okay, so my front panel flap, and I have my Decaville heavy out of my seam allowances on that already. I don't need a lining, nope, just the exterior. And then my front panel base. I do have my Decaville heavy in that my handle, my front, right? Is this my front handle? My front panel flap handle. So this will be the handle on my bag. Um, and then I do have a tiny piece of foam cut out for that, like she suggests. My side pockets. I have two of my exterior canvas and two of my lining canvas cut out for that. My back panel strap backing. This will go over your backpack straps to cover up those raw edges. My back panel handle, so like the little hang handle that goes on the bag, that is that piece. My snap sleeve, if you are doing um, like a pocket on the inside for an electronic, like an iPad or something, it has this snap sleeve to go with it. I have that cut out. I am not doing the key leash. I'm just leaving that out for um, this mini backpack. I don't feel like it's needed for what um, I'm doing it for, but you should have that piece cut out if you're doing that. 
This is my back panel divider pocket. I have two of those and then I am making it um, protected with some foam to make it soft for electronics. So I have all those three pieces cut out. My strap connectors, you should have these triangle pieces. There are four of them. My front panel base, B. Okay, so there's two of those. There's an exterior and a lining. And then you also need to have Peltex or Decavel. I already adhered mine. You can wait until you sew it and she puts it in and then sews it around. I just went ahead and put mine on. Um, it's up to you. Hopefully that works. And let's see my front panel in the side of the lining, my mesh pocket there. My back panel zipper pocket, I got two pieces for that. And my side panels, I have two exterior side panels and they are mirrored. So you are going to have two mirrored pieces for your exterior and two mirrored pieces for your lining. And I already um, based it on my foam. Again, I'm leaving it in my seam allowances because I do have a stronger machine that can handle those layers. And then my main inside panel piece, I have my foam attached and my side pocket inside my mesh pockets on the inside of the bag, two of those. Those are all my pattern pieces. And then you have all of the things that you need. It's not a lot of hardware for this bag. Um, I am doing just webbing for my straps. I'm not doing the padded straps like she has in the pattern just because this is a mini backpack. And if I was doing a bigger one, I would definitely do those padded straps. But for this one, I'm just doing some one and a half inch webbing. I cut mine to about 35 inches. I think the suggested is 35 to 40 for that. Um, I do have some zipper tape here ready to go. I have got four zipper pulls. I think that's correct. Um, I have my pretty little name tag from Heartwood and Hyde. Her pretty, oof, these are going to launch soon and they're colorful and gorgeous. Two um, one and a half inch backpack sliders and a big old roll of binding. This is a binded bag. You can do it. Um, and then the way I am connecting my backpack straps, I am going to use these triangle connectors, some one inch webbing, and then I have some one and a half inch hooks for my straps. That's all my pieces. Okay, let's start making this gorgeous bag. First thing we're going to do is work on our flap handle. So I have my handle piece here. I have my middle line marked and my center line marked here. I'm going to put a piece of double sided tape here. I'm going to get my foam piece for the middle and I've marked where my middle is for this as well. All right. And I put some double sided tape on the back and I'm going to line it up below that uh, middle line here on this side. I'm going to take this side off and fold that in just above that middle line. Not all the way on it, but just above it. Okay. And then I'm going to be folding this piece over here and then again to the middle. So I have a full handle with no raw edges. All right. And then we will sew that together. Your foam should be in the middle of that handle. Okay. Pull that in just below that middle line. Okay, so my raw edges are in. And then I'm going to fold it one more time in half. And now I'm going to sew down each side of this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, sewing this handle together. I'm just clipping it in place here. Since it's got that bolt, that'll help with that, okay? Now I'm just gonna sew that on both sides. All right, here we go. Thank you. 
longer stitch length because we are top stitching. other side here. You could also use webbing for this part. You don't have to use material. You can use some webbing and that would work just fine as well. All right, so it looks good both sides. I am going to put a little bit of more double-sided tape just along the edge of these handle pieces, and we are going to apply it to our flap. All right, using the measurements in the pattern, we are going to do some markings right here on this end. Make sure you're Following the measurements for the size of backpack you're doing, I'm doing the petite. Okay. So those are going to be my sewing lines for this handle. I already have marked where my handle placement is on the flap here. All right, so I know where this is going. It's on your pattern piece. You just transfer the marks. And I'm going to put this right above those markings right here. This is kind of like the on-the-go pouch, how she does the handle for that. So I'm going to sew up across that marking that I just did and back down. And then I'll take it to this side and bring this handle up and do the same thing on this side. I'm pretty much just going over my stitching that I did stitching up the handle. I'm just going over that same row of stitching. If you wanted to do just to the side of it, so it's not a double over like one stitching over the other, you could do that, but I'm, that's just what I'm doing. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, we're not gonna be doing an X through it, we're gonna be putting rivets on in a little bit. Make sure you're putting it the same placement right above that line. And now I'm gonna sew this side on. Okay. Very nice. So that is my flap with the handle. I've got my Decaville Heavy under there, so it has a nice shape to it. We will apply the rivets a little later on, she says in the pattern. So let's go to the next step. So in the pattern, she um, has a label placement for, you know, your handmade tag or your custom label on this front panel, but because I have my front panels kind of busy, I put it right here on my flap, and I think that'll look nice too. This is my Heartwood and Hide Ooh, new color series, Live in Color, I think is what it's called, coming out on the 6th. I love it. Or the 8th. Is it the 8th? It's coming out on the 8th. So much. Okay, so I put my tag there. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to get my front panel and my two zipper pocket pieces out. I've got my zipper cut to the length of this front panel. I want my zipper to be opening from left to right. So I want to lay it down on this first step, opening from 
right to left because it will be flipped over when it's in there in the right. So whatever way you want it to open, do the opposite of right now. Okay. Now she does this a little differently than I have done before. So I'm excited to try this. So we are going to put this on the top edge of our lining here. Okay. And I'm going to sew this top edge at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so this is what I have. So you want this piece right side up. You want this piece zipper side down. And we are lining these up right here at the top of this cutout. All right, so I'm gonna clip it there. So you should have these little pieces hanging over and then you want to measure three eighths of an inch in here oh no okay sorry you're measuring from i think we're measuring from this zipper box cutout in three eighths of an inch Okay, that makes more sense. I'm like, that seems like too much. All right, so we're measuring from this inside piece, three eighths of an inch in. And I will clip that there so it stays in place. I gotta move my zipper a little bit here. All right, and then three eighths from this side. And that is my stopping and starting point for sewing this zipper on. Clips everywhere. Okay, there we go. So this is what I'm doing. I am starting at this one and ending at this one. It's three eighths of an inch in from this little cutout here. That is the front, that is the back. That is what we're looking at. All right, so let's do it. I need to move my zipper pull. I'm going to move it down here, kind of out of my way to start. And here we go. So I'm starting at that 3 8 inch mark, and I am doing a 1 4th quarter of an inch seam allowance. Move my zipper back. All right, and then I'm gonna stop at that other marking. On this side. Come here. Okay, that's the stitching I just did. And now I wanna clip right here at this corner. All right. So I'm clipping from this corner. I am not clipping through my stitching. I'm just clipping to the corner of it right there. Okay, and then I will repeat on this side. All right, so I got clipped right there. And I think now we go and turn it, yep. All right, here we go, I get it, I get it. All right, next thing we wanna do 
as we want to sew these little tabbies into place here. So we're going to take them up right here and we're going to be doing some stitching right there to stitch that down to the zipper. So when it lays, it goes back and flat just like that. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to take this. And I want to take it and sew it along that same line of stitching there as best I can. All right, so it's going to be in line with, yeah, the edge right here. Okay, here we go. Actually, I'm going to take it this way. I think it'll work best with the bulk of my material. Okay. See if that's right. <gasps> Yay, that worked. All right, I'm gonna do the same on this other side here. All right, and that's what I have so far. Okay, next step. Okay, so now I'm going to sew around my zipper. I'm gonna to top stitch around this rectangle here, and then we will add on our back piece of the lining. So I'm just top stitching now. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to take my other lining piece here and we are going to put it and line it up with the top of my zipper along the back. Mine's a little uneven here at the top, but I'm pretty sure that will be covered up when we attach the flap. So I think that is okay. That is okay. All right, so I'm gonna sew that onto the top part of the zipper here. And we're just basting it. And now we want to trim down our pocket piece. We don't want it to go all the way to the edge here. She suggests by doing it by about one inch and that'll even it up. And then we will sew the lining together. The good thing is nobody sees the inside piece and measures it. So. It is a little crooked. It's not the end of the world. All right, so we want to close our pocket now. So we want oh, this part shouldn't have been sewn right here. I should be able to go up like this and up like that, but that's okay. All right, so we want to. So our pocket all together, and you wanna do a bigger seam allowance so we can trim it down just a little bit, which I will do. We 
We're just learning on this one. We're learning. <laughs> it's fine. All right, here we go. You want to trim that out a little bit. You just don't want it in your seam allowance. Mine might be a little bit in my seam allowance, but it'll be okay. If you cut any of your zipper, make sure you melt it again. You don't want those edges spraying. Okay, so there is my front piece. My pocket is on there. We are going to add the flap. Here we go. The flap's going on top of this zipper pocket piece. All right, so we're gonna line that up. I'm just gonna move this zipper down on this side out of my way. Make sure it's nice and centered. Mine is not, just a minute. Right there. All right, now I'm gonna sew this flap onto the zipper. Here we go. Sure, I got all of it. Yay! Look at that. All right, front and back. And yep, we're gonna top stitch. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna fold it this way and I'm gonna top stitch along this top part of the flap. we're going to do with this front panel piece is add our base piece along the bottom here. So I'm going to take the two pieces right sides together and we are going to sew that at the said seam allowance in the pattern. And she doesn't say, so your pocket shouldn't be included in this. So make sure you flip that up. It shouldn't come down to it, but just in case, flip it up. And we're gonna sew that together. And she doesn't say to top stitch this part, but I think I'm going to. If you're worried about bulk, you can kind of clip these corners here. Get that out of the way. I'm going to flip it down because I know it needs to be down like this um, when it's all sewn together. And then I'm going to top stitch. All right, so now your front exterior piece is done. I'm going to put that aside and I want my lining piece here and my mesh pocket piece. I've got this piece right here and some of my binding. All right, I wanna make sure this is going the right way. I think it's that way. Yeah, this way. 
Okay, I'm going to be putting my binding on the top and bottom of this mesh piece. All right, just like that. Now you could do some double-sided tape. I cut my mesh the wrong way. It should be stretchy this way. You know, your mesh wants to stretch this way. I cut it the wrong, um, on the wrong width. So I may be putting on my pocket piece like this instead. It'll be fine. Just a tiny bit different in the width, but that's fine, or in the length. All right, so you can put some double-sided tape, top and bottom, um, if you don't feel strong about doing it this way, if you don't think you'll catch all the layers, but this is how I'm, I'm just sandwiching my layers, my mesh in between my two layers of my binding and sewing that on. I've done this quite a few times, making all the on-the-go pouches that I've got it down. other side here. And then cut it evenly with your mesh here. All right, and now we wanna place it on our lining piece. So I transferred markings from my pattern piece to my lining here, and that is gonna be the bottom part of this pocket. So I will line that up. And I may have cut this right, actually. I think I did this right. It should be overlapping slightly, so I think I actually did it the right way. <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of clipping this all in place so it doesn't move too much as I sew it on. So I'm gonna be sewing down the side, down around the bottom, and back up the other side. are thinking that one stitch is not enough for this bottom, you can go ahead and do another row of stitching, which I think I'm gonna do right down the middle of the two. Make sure we caught all the layers of mesh and binding and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll show you. You see how I have those three lines along my bottom? Okay. So there is my mesh pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and add my bias to the inside lining side pockets. And we're just doing the top edge of these. And then we'll go to the next step in the pattern. We are now gonna start adding our main zipper onto these, this front and uh, inside lining panel. But before I go there, I realized that my handle here, it was four layers of faux suede. That four layers will be folded into my zipper that I'm sewing and will be even thicker like this. And I would have to top stitch I could probably do it with my machine, but it wouldn't be pretty and it wouldn't be easy. So I took off this handle. I think it's too thick. If you wanna use 
this type of material, I would suggest just keeping it out of the seam allowances and making it shorter than going all the way to the ends. Um, I took this off and I put on some webbing instead. So the webbing is a lot thinner. I'll be able to fold it over and top stitch through it a lot easier. So keep that in mind for your handles is that you probably will have to fold it over and top stitch through all the layers. Make sure you're using a material that your machine can handle. Okay, so I replaced that. I have my big zipper here. I have clipped the centers on the top and I'm going to be basting it around this main panel first. So I want to line my centers up at the top and go from there. So it should be right here. I've clipped it both right there. There's both of my centers. And we are doing right sides together. All right. And you're just gonna take it down and around this whole panel and we will be basting it at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now it's a little easier if you take it. I sewed both ends of my zipper shut, okay? They're sewn shut down here at the bottom. So my zipper pulls won't fall off. I have a double, double zipper pull on here. I'm just gonna go like that and get this one out of the way so this is easier to work with. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this down and around my panel and then I will baste it on. This is also the reason you wanted this zipper pocket to be out of your seam allowances because you don't really want to be sewing that in with your zipper. It's good to keep that out as well. I'll remember that for next time and be more careful about that. It'll be out of my seam allowances, but barely. Good to know. All right, so once you have it clipped all the way down, we are going to take it very slowly and sew it and baste it down at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This is where I get my stiletto tool or some kind of tool where you can guide your zipper and your material along. It will help a lot. And we will get this basted down to this main panel piece. All right, so after we have that all basted on, you're going to take this lining piece that we added this mesh pocket to. I'm gonna, I should have trimmed up my sides real quick. Let me trim my sides up. I already attached my foam on here because um, I know my, my machine can handle the layers um, with my zipper, but if you have a machine that cannot, then wait to add the foam. She has you slide it on 
after you get these two pieces together, she has you slide it in from the bottom and up. So if that's um, an issue for you, just wait. Okay, so I'm going to clip this on the same way. I'm just going to do right sides together. My zipper is sandwiched in between. I'm finding my centers, which is right here. I've clipped it on both pieces. And now I'm just going to clip that lining down and around this piece that I just sewed the zipper to, making sure I get the zipper nice and flat on these curves as I'm going. I'm making sure it's laying flat right there before I put a clip on it. And then the clip kind of holds it flat as well, which is nice. So I can make sure my zipper doesn't have any bumps or curves to it. All right, and we're gonna do that along the whole piece down both sides. All right, so if you want, you can trim a little bit out of these corners here, but don't trim your zipper tape. I'm only trimming the foam lining piece. I'm just trimming around this curve here. All right, there's not much, but it might make a difference. Just the lining piece not the zipper. All right, so now we're gonna turn this right side out. All right, so here we go. There it is. Work it out really nicely. Okay, so this is where you don't want those thick seams here and here and here and here. I tried my best to keep this zipper short enough that it wasn't in this seam allowance and neither is my pocket, which is what I wanted. I wanna make sure my pocket's laying flat in there though before I top stitch, so make sure you're Pocket piece is nice and flat. Now this is where you would insert your foam if you hadn't basted it onto your lining piece. You would insert it, insert it to your um, piece now. And now we are going to top stitch around this entire thing. And after we do that, she has you top stitch along this bottom piece. So I did that earlier and that's why in the instructions she didn't have you doing it is because you do it after the fact. So I'm learning. I didn't read that part. So <laughs> I will be going over again this stitching because I think it helps give it the shape of the bag. So I will be doing that as well. So we'll go ahead and top stitch around and down across.
All right, so after that's top stitched all the way around, you're going to, if you hadn't yet, <laughs> top stitch between the two layers here along this bottom piece. So I'm just gonna do another row of stitching down there. Sorry, my foot keeps hitting the camera. Okay, so I'm doing it through all the layers, okay? And I think this helps with the final shape of the bag. All right. And now the other thing you can do is your handle because we only did these rectangle um, stitches on it and she said don't put an X through it yet or rivets because now is the time where you either put rivets on or you sew an X through all the layers. It just gives it a little bit more to hang on to, more stable. Um, I'm going to do a couple of rivets, probably two in each side and then we will go to the next step. Okay, so I have marked out where I want my rivets. I've got two on each side and they're even. And I will just use this little tool. I got it off of Amazon. There's a couple of different kinds. This is the cheaper version. This is the more expensive. Um, this one doesn't do as many layers as this one because it's got a short tip. I'm wondering if I can change the tip. Um, I do like the way this one works a little bit better. It's just... Um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to do all my layers that I need. Oh, it did. All right. This one just goes easily. It's not as hard to press. Or you can just use a leather hole tool too. That works as well. Somebody asked about whether the webbing would fray. I'm not quite sure. I've never had it happen before, but we are cutting holes into it. So that's a great question. Um, I am just going to try and burn those edges though, just in case. Just going through all of my layers here. I think that's it. Looks good. I will, as best I can, try and melt where I just cut. Okay. And I'm going to put on some rivets here. I find it easiest for me to do this standing up. <laughs> Get a better angle on it. All right, and then I just use my rivet press here. Whoops. And I lost it back to one of them. How come that one doesn't want to go on? Let's do this one. There we go. And then I just press. Go nice and slow so they don't set wonky. I can't see. Okay, there's one of them. Let's do the other side. Double check to get it. I got all the way down. Yeah. Okay. So there are my rivets on my handle, the front and the back. 
All right, and now the last thing we wanna do on this piece before we move on, we're gonna put the bottom piece down here on. Now, if you haven't put in your Peltex in on your base piece, I adhered mine ahead of time. Um, but if you didn't do that, you can put that in the bottom now and get that in between your layers. And then you're gonna get your base, front panel base piece, pieces. There should be two of them. I already have my Decaville Heavy applied. But if you don't, then go ahead and do that. So we are going to be adding this to the bottom here. So I want this piece first, and it should be the width, including the zipper of all of this, because it's gonna close off our bottom and come down like that. All right, so I'm going to baste this first one on. I'm going to center it up here. I want to baste this one on first and then I will add my lining to it. All right, so I'm closing off the zippers and everything. So make sure your zipper poles are up. You don't want them down here because then you'll close off your zippers completely. All right, here we go. I'm going to baste this first. Let's turn you just a little bit. There we go. And now I want to sew on this lining piece to that right sides together, get it centered. Okay. And now I'm gonna sew that at a bigger seam allowance. And then you're gonna flip them down. Just like that. So that ends this, let's see. Okay, you wanna trim off your extra zipper here. Right there. Right there. Melting that zipper. All right. And then we want to baste this bottom piece closed. Now, if you didn't adhere your Decaville Heavy or Peltex, you want to slide it in there first and then close it off. So I'm going to stitch along this piece as well, it looks like, yes, along here too. All right, here we go. Let's see, I want to go, yeah, we're going to do this first. And then I'm going to baste it down and around.
My zipper sticks out a tiny bit. That's totally fine. It's going to be sewn into your bag and you won't be able to see it. I'm going to trim it just a little bit, but make sure you melt it. Right there. All right. That is looking awesome. Okay, next up. We are going to work on our exterior and interior side pockets. So here are my pieces and I think they are, yep, yeah, they're an even square. So I don't think I'm going to do the elastic on this petite bag on the outside pockets, but it will kind of stand out a little bit, but I won't put the elastic through the top. Um, I'm gonna take them right sides together, sew them along the top at the seam allowance I mentioned in the pattern and then turn it over and top stitch. Do that one and I'll go ahead and do this one as well. Sorry for all the little feet. It is a weekend and summer so Rarely is my house empty anymore. Okay. And she has on there that you can always trim your corners like that to just help with the bulk of your seams. So if you want to, I'll just show you. I don't really necessarily need to, but I'll do it anyways. Just like that within that seam allowance, okay? All right, I'm gonna turn them over and top stitch. Okay, and then after I top stitch here, I will go ahead and just baste the rest of my pocket closed so my two layers are sewn shut for the next step. one pocket. Let's do this other one. Two of those made. All right, so since I am not doing the elastic on the top, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. Now, obviously, this pocket is going to be bigger than our side panel because um, you need room to put things in it. So we are going to pleat the bottom and we want to make markings. Let me double check. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Okay. Yep. So we want to make markings along both sides. It's stated in the pattern, the different lengths for the different or the different markings for the different sizes of um, the bag. So mine's the petite. So I'm doing the petite markings. I'm also, just to make this easy, I'm going to clip my center here and down here. So I can line those up easily too. All right. So this is the top of my piece. I'm going to do my marking down here on the bottom. And then 
clip my center. And my center on this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just clip my center down here. Uh, I guess it helps if I do the pleat first. So I'm going to clip this right here and clip this onto here. It's going to be awkward for a minute while we figure out this bottom pleat. So that brings that up a little bit. You see that? And you could go ahead and finish clipping this up the side here. And this up the side here. I've never done this um, pattern, so I'm just guessing at what's gonna work for me. Okay, so because I have this center marked, that's good. I want my fold to line up flat along this, whoops, our first marking here. So I folded it, made sure my center was still lined up and folded it to meet that um, marking that I put right there. And that is that side of the pleat. I'm gonna clip that in place. And then same thing with this side. Now I'm just folding it to meet that other marking over here. So it's an even pleat. So this is where my markings were. This is in the center of my bag and I folded it out to meet those markings. It's not too hard, it just, just gotta line it all up. So now I'm gonna baste my pocket down so it will look like this on my bag. Now, if you have an elastic top, it'll be, you know, kind of scrunched in with elastic. I like the look of the pocket kind of out like this. So it just depends what you prefer. Now I'm just basting this all down. side does have a curve to it on the actual pattern piece. Do you see that? I think I caught it. I curved it right there. And then you will just trim that pocket down with that curve and any extra overhang there. So you do have a curve down there at the end. Okay. There is the first pocket. Let me do the second one here. That seemed to work okay. I'm going to do that again. And there are my two exterior pocket side panels. And now I'm going to take my lining side panels. All right. And these are just super easy. You're just basting along your edges. These pockets that we prepped earlier. Nothing too fancy or hard about this part, okay? Okay, and since we are binding this bag, the next thing we need to do 
is put our exterior and lining side panels together. Let me double check. Yes, okay. <laughs> we are gonna baste these two together. So I'm gonna get my exterior and my lining and you want them wrong sides together. So your right sides are gonna be facing out. Wrong sides together. I know it feels wrong, but it's right. <laughs> okay. So I'm just clipping those. And then I'm gonna baste these two panels together. Now, if you haven't added your foam yet, this is the point you would stick your foam in between the two layers out of your seam allowance if you don't want that thickness, but mine's already sewn into my seams. All right, I'm gonna baste those two layers together. There's one side. Same thing on the other panel. Those are my two panels. We're gonna set those aside and work on our next part. We're gonna um, prep the straps real quick. I am not doing the straps that are in the pattern. I am using just webbing and some swivel clips and some one inch webbing here. This is a half inch. Um, I'm just doing it a tiny bit different. So I will show you how I prep the top piece first. I'm gonna slide it through my slide adjuster and fold it over. I'm going to sew that together. And I will do a little rectangle. And I need to protect my hardware coming this way. Don't want my foot to rest on it. So I'm gonna put some vinyl behind that. And then you can do an X through it if you want to here. I figure why not? A little extra reinforcement never hurt, hurt anybody. And do it. And then. I know it's hard to see because it's black thread with black webbing. There we go. Okay. All right. And then I want to take, I'm doing swivel clips here. And then I'll take it up and through. And that'll be it. That's all I'm doing right now for that strap. Because then this gets connected onto the bag and then it will hook onto this bottom piece that I'm doing. So go ahead and repeat that for your other strap if you're doing it this way. Hopefully this works. I've, I'm just going off of experience of other bags that I've done like this. All right, here we go. All right, put those aside and I am going to get these pieces out. 
And I am doing them on some one inch webbing with these connectors and that's how my straps are going to attach. So first I need to just sew this closed real quick. Just makes it easier while I'm sewing this all together. All right, so you're gonna take the first triangle piece and lay it here. And then I want to make sure that this is centered on here. So I'm just doing a tiny snip so I know where my center is. Okay, and then we're going to center that here, but I'm gonna lay it a little bit over so it has extra coming out here. So that's about a half of an inch for me. And again, I'm just going to make sure that is as centered as I can right there. I'm gonna clip it into place. And then I'm gonna take the other piece here and put it on top, right sides together. My connector's in the middle there. All right, so my connector's in the middle. Here's my piece. I'm gonna sew along the top and the side of this piece. All right, so to give it some extra reinforcement, I'm gonna sew again, right next to that one. On that webbing there. All right. And then I kinda of wanna trim down these corners here for turning. And maybe this one too, actually. All right, and then we turn that through. Something to poke out your corner with here. And you've got yourself a cool little connector. All right. So instead of mine just being webbing right here, I've got my connector piece to clip my swivel clip on. It'll get put on your backpack like that in the seam. So your other one needs to be the opposite way, right? Cause you need them both on each side. So I'm going to, am I gonna top stitch that? Yes, I'm going to top stitch that. And then we'll do the other one, the same steps, but we'll top stitch it with the opposite direction um, up. I want that trim down too. And then you can just baste this shut. And that is my first little connector. That's cute. All right, I'll go ahead and get my second one going.
we're gonna work on our back panel. I'm going to do a zipper pocket over here on the right side. You can choose which side you wanna do it on. Um, I'm doing my install of the panel just a little bit different than she has in the pattern. Um, I just feel more comfortable with this way. So choose which way you wanna do it. Either way is great. I've kind of marked out um, the placement of where I want the zipper. So my rectangle is on this zipper um, lining and I have the markings on my back panel where I want to line up that lining right there. It pretty much is in line with the pattern piece of where this is supposed to be. I am going to sew around this rectangle and then turn my pocket through. These are right sides together as well. I just realized something I did wrong. I didn't look at my panel to know which one was top and bottom. So this piece right here is supposed to be on the top here. So luckily I can probably just peel this off if I get it warm. Well, it might just peel off. I'm gonna have to replace this piece and cut it out of here. And then I'll re-put it on here and we'll finish. Whoops, so pay attention to which way is your top and your bottom. Okay, after a little bit of surgery there, I took off the Decaville on that side, placed it up at the top at the right side. It's supposed to be at the top of my zipper. So make sure you're paying attention if you have already attached that. Okay, we should be good. I shouldn't have to cut out any new pieces. There we go, just cutting out along the zipper. Again, I'm doing this my own way. So feel free to follow either way. Okay, and then we wanna pull the pocket through. To the back side. And then I'm just gonna give this a really nice, good press. Yeah, we should be fine. I've got, you know, this canvas with this faux suede. I don't really need to use an iron for this part, but if you're doing cotton, I highly suggest Pressing all this nice with an iron. All right, now I'm gonna put my zipper in there. Have my zipper, I want mine opening from top to bottom. I'm like, which way is my top? <laughs> Here's my top, I want it opening from up down. So I'm gonna put my zipper in this way. All right, here we go. I'm going to take the bottom piece off first and place that in there. I will be trimming a lot of the zipper pocket and some of the zipper down after I've installed it all just to be sure that everything is out of my seam allowances. And then I'm going to flip it up and take off this top piece here. And flip it back down. Okay, 
I'm gonna sew around this zipper now, top stitch around it. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is add my other pocket piece. And I'm gonna go, don't pay attention to that. It was a mistake. <laughs> I, I drew it out wrong the first time. And now I'm just going to lay these right sides together on top of what I just sewed. And I'm just sewing on the pocket lining pieces. Okay, so first I like to sew this top piece as close as I can get because I want to cut this out of my seam allowance. I don't want this piece in my seam allowance. So I'm going to sew this on first. And then I will sew the rest of it together. Again, I will try to get kind of close right here because I do want to trim this down. And that is my zipper pocket. I'm gonna trim it down just a little bit. I will make sure I melt those zippers that I'm cutting right there. It looks like everything is good, far enough away from my seams. And then we'll work on our top strap and handle. Next step, we're gonna work on our back panel here, putting our handle and our straps on. Now mine are gonna be just a tiny bit different because of I'm using webbing and not the actual straps, but not terribly different. Okay, so this is my strap backing piece. It's gonna cover you know, the raw edges of my handle and straps. I put double-sided tape on one side here and I will fold that over because we want that edge to be 
clean. We don't want a raw edge on that side. And then I went ahead and just drew where I needed to sew. I need to sew at a 3 8 inch seam allowance along here. So I just drew that on my piece. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry if I do. Um, all right. And then, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. <laughs> so I want to take, I have the markings that were on my pattern piece and moved them to my back and I'm going to line up the raw edge of this piece with the line on my pattern piece. Okay. So the markings along that line, and then I'm going to sew that on at my three eighths inch seam allowance that I marked on my piece. Like I just missed my pocket piece, which is perfect. Look at that. So make sure you're not sewing your pocket piece on there with this piece. All right, and then I changed my handle to this webbing since that's what I used for the top grab handle. I figured that would look the best. I've marked out my center here on my bag. So I'm gonna put this handle right here in the center and then this is the markings. I did it two and a half inches apart. I'm not sure on my strap, I'm guessing. Um, she says anywhere from two to three and an eighth for an adult. So I'm doing two and a half. And that's where I'll be placing my webbing on each side. So this handle, I'm gonna put about right there. It's up to you where you want it. Okay, just make sure it looks pretty even. Yeah, that looks good to me. All right, and sew that on, or baste it on, I guess. And now I want to put on my straps. So my straps need to come up and over like this. So be sure you're putting them on the correct way. So I want mine coming up and I also want mine, I'm going to cut mine kind of at an angle because you want them, since I'm not doing the curved straps, I do want these at a slight angle just like that. Okay, you see how they're kind of angled up? And then I will trim that bottom off a little bit. And I need to melt my webbing anytime you cut it, just like a zipper. You need to melt the edges or it will fray. Okay. Okay. So that's going to go up and go on like that. So it's got that double. Okay. So I'm going to get my other strap. Do the same thing. I want it going up like this. About right there. It looks even.
Next, you wanna flip this up. She says to meet this raw edge here. I'm gonna do it just a little bit higher right above that raw edge, just to where you want it right there. Um, I put another piece of double-sided tape along here to stick it. And then I am going to top stitch all the way around it. And I probably will do an extra row of stitching as well. So I think I want it about there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take it and top stitch in this rectangle all the way around. And then I probably will do it again. I'm not gonna put rivets on the back. Um, I'm just going to do two rows of stitching and I think it should be good. I am going to run into this little part right here. It's almost my zipper. I don't know if that's because I did it the way that I did it or if that's how the pattern is. So just be aware that you might be running into a tiny bit of zipper right here. I think I'll be okay though, yeah. As long as I'm not, I don't think I am. Well, I guess if you tack your pocket down, it's not the end of the world either, actually. It'll just stay in place. All right, and then I'm gonna do a second row of stitching along the top here. I think I wanna go one more. There we go. Now, if you are putting foam onto this piece of your bag, now's the time you, were, you would do it. I'm doing it on the inside lining piece of my bag, so I'm not putting foam here. Look, I did top stitch it a little bit up there. That's okay, it'll just stay in place and won't sag. All right, so the last thing we need to do on this back is put our connecting pieces on the sides. So I want one going up this way and the other one going up this way. All right, so I have my markings that I transferred down here for placement from my pattern piece, and I'm just gonna baste this on each side. All right, so when my backpack is done, I just clip this piece down in there. And I could probably just already do that so they don't go flying and get them out of my way. All right, that is the back of my backpack. Cute, all right. I'm gonna work on my last inside lining piece, that divider prop, or not divider pocket. Yeah, uh, what's it? Sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna work on my lining piece, the last part, the divider pocket. So this is going to be my snap tab. I am folding my raw edges into the middle. 
All right. Okay, so I folded my raw edges in um, to the center and then I folded it in half like this. I'm gonna sew down and around that. And then this will be my snap tab for my divider pocket. And we'll put on a cam snap. All right, so you want your cam snap to go on the um, edge that does not have the raw edge, all right? So I'm going to take just a little hole punch and eyeball the center of my tab. That looks good. So that's about a half inch from the bottom, which is pretty much what I did. All right, and I've got two little pieces to this. I'm gonna put the top here, poke it through. And then this one. It really doesn't matter the order, which is top or bottom. They are usually labeled male and female. Um, the male just means it has, you know, a piece poking up. So it goes into the other piece. Um, that one is usually on the top. So I've got my little hand press. This is seriously the easiest thing to use. And you just press it down and that sets it. Super easy snaps. All right, so that is my snap tab for my divider pocket. I'm gonna set that aside. I did cut down my foam for my divider pocket. So it will be out of my seam allowances because I thought with the foam on the back panel as well, it could be too thick. So I am going to sew the top and the bottom divider pocket, and then I will be sliding this into the pocket. All right. Right sides together, helps if I do that right. Right sides together, sew along the top and bottom at the seam allowance, and then we will turn that right side out. Just along the top and the bottom. Seams pressed out really good there. I'm just, you know, this canvas creases so nicely. I'm just giving it a good finger press. But if you have an iron and you're doing cotton, I would highly suggest using an iron for this. All right, so once I have that done, I'm gonna slide this foam in the middle and then I will top stitch. Again, this is just to protect if you're gonna be putting like a little tablet or something into your bag, it gives it a little extra padded protection. All right, I'm trying to keep this out of my seam allowances here. Looks like it's about right. All right, it's about a half inch in from each side. And now I'm going to top stitch top and bottom.
gonna add this to our lining piece. Here we go, here's my lining piece. Make sure I have this going the right way. And we want to mark up from the bottom. She gives you markings in the pattern of where to place this. Okay. All right, so I am going to just line up the edges of this piece with my lining. I'm gonna baste along my sides. I am not basting the bottom shut because this is made for your tablet to go through and hold it in place. It's not necessarily a closed off pocket on the bottom. Um, if you wanted to do a closed off pocket on the bottom, you totally could. There is no reason you couldn't do that. And then we need to put our snap tab piece on. So I am going to just clip the center of my top here. I need to do that anyways, probably. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm not sure, but it's usually helpful. And then I'm gonna get this piece and I want it um, the snap side down. And I wanna line that up in the center here. That looks good right there. Gonna baste that on. And then we need to line up where we want the other part of the snap. Now, usually you don't want to lay it flat like that because then if it's filled, it can't snap closed. So you really do want to have it up just a little bit like that. So I'm just going to mark where I want this. Right, right there. You just want to punch through this divider pocket, not the lining as well. So just this divider pocket, I'm gonna install my snap, my other part of my snap. And we are in business. My chair is squeaky today. All right. Good. Snap tab. Boom. See how it kind of comes up a little bit? Because then it has room to go. All right. I'm going to take my two panels now and baste them together. So I have my lining and my exterior back. Make sure they're facing the right way. Wrong sides together. And we are going to baste these together. I'm just gonna put some clips so it all stays in place. All right, I'm gonna sew around that. Basting those two pieces, and then we will put on our side pieces. Okay. After that's done, I'm gonna take my side panel pieces now. This one I want here, this one I want here. We are going to sew those together. 
And this is where your layers can get thick, right here. Definitely do not keep foam in your seam allowance if you are not sewing on an industrial machine. You would not be able to sew through the layers. All right, I'm gonna sew that together. I'm just making sure everything's situated right. So I did right sides together. You're going to have this raw edge and we're going to be covering it with binding. Okay, I'm going to be going over here and doing the same thing. looking so good. All right. So the next thing we need to do is put some bias tape on there and she suggests trimming it down if you need to. Um, I think I will trim my, um, I will trim my seam down by just the tiniest bit and then we'll put on our bias. Okay. I trimmed it down just a tiny bit. So it's about a fourth of an inch. I'm going to be taking this bias tape. I cut a little bit longer than the length of this side seam. I'm just gonna fold it over and sew it on. And that covers up that inside seam. And we are almost there. It looks a little bit more on this side. There we go. Try and get it even. Really don't want to sew it a million times. Let's do this once. All right. I think that looks good. All right, I'm gonna do this side first. Here we go. All right, make sure that you caught both sides and it looks like I'm good. And you kind of want to match the color of your thread to your binding so it covers up any weird stitching. It really does help. I'm just trimming this off at the ends. All right. 
I'm going to go ahead, see, and then on the outside, it looks like that looks great. I'm going to repeat for this other side. All right, it looks good. I caught both layers. Yeah, we're good. All right, so there is my binded back panel and side panels. And now it is time to add this all together. All right, we're going to be attaching our two final pieces together. Um, I've got my stapler. Um, I've heard stapling the corners of this is helpful. Um, you're going to want to make sure that everything is out of your way as you sew. So just be double checking all your straps, all that kind of good stuff. Um, you want those all down and out of the way. So I have my back panel right side up. I have my main zipper panel right side down. I have marked the center of this top zipper and the center of my top panel here. And I am going to line those up first. All right, I'm gonna line those two up first, right there. We will be unzipping the zipper. We don't wanna keep it zipped up. I feel like it would be way harder. And I think she mentions in the pattern, it's easier to unzip it all the way. All right, I've got those two clipped and then I want to, do I wanna clip? I think I wanna clip the bottom um, centers as well. Let me clip this one real quick. I don't think I have this one marked. You wanna come down here and I'm gonna clip these bottom centers as well. All right, so this is what you should have right now. Okay, I am going to unzip this all the way, maybe. <laughs> and it'll just help me um, be able to do this zipper a little bit better along the way. All right, so now we have to just get this completely clipped to this other panel here. And you're gonna have some curves, okay? Gonna have some curves. I don't like to snip my zipper, a lot of people do I worry about it fraying my zipper? So I just kind of take it and turn it with the turns. You can do it. As long as you go slow when you're stitching this, it should be fine. This might be the trickiest little area down here in the corner. All right. Because it is gonna come all the way down this curve here to the bottom. But this isn't any bigger than that curve that was on the flap, I think. So I think it's doable. Hard to show this, so I'm clipping it right down here. This might be the trickiest little area here. Okay, get that lined up because that's going to be your, you know, your bias edge right there, and then you're going to have to fit this curve in right here. I think if anywhere, I will 
probably staple right down here. All right, do you see how I come down and around? It's a really cool shape. So when you when you unzip, it's going to open all the way up. It's really cool how she designed this. I like it a lot. All right, so now I'm going to work on this other side of my zipper and do the same thing down the other side and get that all clipped together. So your zipper should be facing right side down to your front panel, all right? That's how it should be. If you see, ugh, my clips keep breaking. Um, if you see the right side of your teeth, you're doing it wrong. And you wanna see the back side of your zipper. I think this little corner right here is probably gonna be the trickiest part of the whole outside of the bag. It's just kind of a funky little area. I'm not sure how that's gonna sew. I will most likely use staples for this little area right here. Ah, sorry. I was just trying to get it down closer so you could see. All right, so right along here and right along here. That's gonna be a tricky little spot. All right, I have this all clipped. I'm going to take my stapler and just do a couple staples here and here on these little corners um, like an eighth of an inch in my seam allowance because I don't want to sew over it. So I will show you. Especially right here is going to cause issues. So I want to staple it right in here where that curves. You see how close to that seam allowance I am and then if my stapler can I don't think it'll go through the binding layer kind of a hard angle to get it there we go all right so that is not going anywhere and maybe I'll put another one in right down here that's good so I put three staples right there. I'm gonna do the same on this side here. I put a clip on too, just cause I'm um, paranoid like that. So, and then go over here. My kids are home from work and they're yelling at the dog. <laughs> they're greeting the dog. <laughs> All right, I think that should keep it in place. All right, we're gonna go ahead and sew this on. All right, here we go. It's gonna take me a bit. I'm gonna go super slow. Um, she says that she likes to start along the bottom, so I'm going to do that, and we will take this easy. Take her easy. Here we go. Make sure as you sew, all the extra stuff is not in your stitching.
I would kind of pick up your bag from the back as you go. I'm picking it up back here to kind of help turn it. And I want to make sure that my zipper pull isn't in the way of my stitching too. I would highly suggest stapling there. I think that helped a ton. This staple is coming out. So I just need to move that. That's my binding on the other side there. So I'm just helping my um, foot through that. And there we go. It helps to lift your bag up here. I've got my bag held up. Again, more layers that's going through my pleats, so I just sometimes have to help it. Don't want to get that zipper folded. I'm just making sure it's laying flat. very much flatten out my zipper as I go around these corners with this stiletto tool. Like I'm holding it flat right here for these curves and that helps a lot. We're gonna have another big area right there. is a little um, wrinkly up here and I'm just kind of moving it along and I think I'll make the up for it in these curves. So I think it should line up okay. It's kind of evening out here.
Just moving my zipper out of the way right there. It was slightly in the way. Okay, I think we've done it. I will have to remove all these staples before I put anything else in. I don't want to sew over those staples, but let's just give it a look real quick. Let's see what we have. I'm going to have all my raw edges sewn. Okay, I'm just going to turn this out real quick and zip it up. Let's see. Super excited. All right. Looks like I'll be having to trim a little bit of this down, not the zipper part, but definitely um, some of the material. All right, here we go. Make sure this, oh, I didn't catch it right here. Look, that's why it's important to turn it I missed it right there. So I'll have to go back and sew that. That's okay. Let's see. I think some of my material is a little bit in my way. So I will be trimming that before I do the bias. Oh my goodness. Look at this. And I need to fix this bottom corner right there. And that is okay. I can do that. Oh my gosh. I did it. I did it. <laughs> that is such a cute bag. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I just need to go in and fix this corner over here. It's just slightly didn't get caught right there. And then I will be trimming down some of my material by the zipper, not the zipper itself. Um, and then we will put on our binding. All right, so I just trimmed down any um, spot where there was overhang of my material so it's all even with the edge of the zipper and I am going to start putting on my binding. Um, I did have the thought that I wanna keep the binding close to this same seam allowance here because I don't want it to go crazy over and the zipper gets stuck in it when I zip it up and down. So I will be kind of clipping it right there um, on my previous sewn line. I'm gonna start on the bottom. All right, this is just gonna take me a little bit to get this all clipped on and then we will sew it.
Okay, I have it all clipped on. I'm going to sew it facing up the same way I based it on um, the zipper. That's just so I can see it and see where I'm at. I know for sure I'll catch the other side because it's a bigger um, binding on the other side. So let's do this last step.
All right, so the first thing I wanna do is look at the back side of it and make sure that all the binding was caught in my stitching. And it looks like right there, do you see how it kind of came up? So I'm gonna fix that real quick. Again, the binding does not have to be that pretty. I mean, it's great if it is pretty, but <laughs> super hard to get perfect binding on a bag. All right, I'm just gonna fix this one little spot. Make sure we get this. go. Got it. All right, let's see if there's anywhere else. All right, the rest looks good. Here we go. Let's see how it zips up. Super easy to turn. <laughs> Not much to it. Look at that. All right, let's zip her up. Okay guys, we're all done. There is our fold and zip backpack. Super, super adorable. I absolutely love this design. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. Again, you can get this backpack pattern at a discount. Use code SIASWAG10, all caps. The link is below in the description. And go get yourself a cute backpack pattern.